Well, good morning, good morning. We are here at the Buckhead Business Show today. We've got three fabulous guests, and Rich Casanova, Michael Moore here in the studio, and this show is sponsored by or brought to you by the Buckhead Business Association. As you know, this organization is quite an old and prestigious organization here in Buckhead, and we're rolling up on how many years, Rich? Sixty-five. Uh, well, yes, <laughs> sixty-five. Not you and I, but the BBA. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I did turn sixty-seven. Yesterday. Yeah. Happy That's birthday a whole to different you. Story. Yeah. But uh, and, I, and by the way, I'm still with you today. So we've had some fun <laughs> at it. But sixty-five years ago, the folks in Buckhead decided they wanted to figure out who was turning over the garbage cans in front of their stores <laughs> at night. So they they formed a group and called the Buckhead Business Association. We're here at their pleasure today, as well as we're coming to you live from the Buckhead. Uh, a beautiful view, our billion dollar view, and of course the last part is that we're a pro business channel, so we're really focused on business and leaning forward to make it even better. Today in the studio we've got Maria Peck, who's with ACE, and I will tell you what that means in a minute. We've got Karen Rance, who's an author and a compassionate capitalist, which is important to all of us small business owners. And then we've got Taylor Higdon, who's going to tell us a little bit about micro-targeting in the marketplace, and that's going to really show us how businesses can grow in the marketplace. So let me, uh, as I have to shuffle back through my notes, because we've got in a hurry this morning. But, um, Maria, you've been in the studio before, haven't you? I have. You, you've been here with, uh, with ACE, which uh, is Access to Capital for Entrepreneurs, which is a fabulous organization. You've finished, just finished a great assignment, uh, but you've previously been director of the ACE Women's Center. And uh, it's been one of the largest projects, but you've slated to begin another great large project, which you're going to be part of the nonprofit Hispanic initiative for the group out in the Gwinnett area. So we'll sneak you in the buckhead today. But you've been at it for over three years working in this marketplace, and you're going to have a very neat impact on the uh, Hispanic uh, community as they grow businesses and make access to capital a little more realistic for us. We look forward to really hearing, hearing firsthand about what that's going to look like. So how in the world did you get with ACE to start with? And tell us a little bit of background of ACE, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, ACE is a nonprofit organization providing access to capital to those businesses that want to either start or grow. We are a nonprofit organization, like I mentioned, so we are a uh, lender with a mission. Uh, the way I got started with ACE is because I myself am a business owner and I started a restaurant. And I ran that restaurant for six years. And when I was starting the restaurant, I realized that access to capital was a very big pain <laughs> point for most entrepreneurs. Obviously, a restaurant industry is a difficult one for the banks, so it was very difficult to find access to capital. So I had to use the three Fs, friends, family, and fools, to fund my business. <laughs> so um, when uh, I was in a pickle and I needed a new refrigerator system, so I found an organization like ACE, a national organization, to lend me the money. At that point, I realized there were alternatives. I could find somewhere somebody else to lend me the funds. So... Fast forward, I sold the restaurant, I became a mom, I stayed home, and when I went back into the workforce, I realized this organization was looking for someone to do some outreach, and I said, I'm the perfect person for that because I'm a testimonial to what they do, and I've been a recipient of their money. Well, that's right, and you, you had to find the story yourself, as you say. Now, I know one of the challenges is always information and also, as you said, community outreach, but looking out in the Gwinnett County Marketplace race. And, and ACE, by the way, want, want to tell our audience, uh, ACE does work throughout Atlanta, throughout Georgia, throughout? Absolutely. So uh, the reason my title uh, it's re or my work is in the Hispanic communities, largely in Gwinnett, is because of the large amount of Hispanic population in Gwinnett County. But I've served, ACE serves 68 counties in the state of Georgia, so we very much serve anywhere. Our concentration is the Atlanta market. And uh, for Gwinnett Target, you've been working in that marketplace a little bit, and obviously the Hispanic community is growing so fast in Gwinnett County, and uh, there is a need for expansion. So talk to me a little bit about the process of what you see over the next two or three years for you as you begin to really entrench uh, some solutions for the folks out in Gwinnett County. Well, one of the focuses of ACE is access to capital to minorities and women. And so what we're trying to do in this new Hispanic initiative is try to grow our market share of access to capital with the Hispanic community, which largely, as a minority, has had difficulty accessing the capital they need to grow their businesses or even start their businesses. So that is my focus. However, I can serve anyone in, in the Atlanta area with access to capital needs. But uh, what we see is which we hope hope to make a huge impact, not only in the access to capital piece, but also in the growth of the small business owners in the Hispanic community through education and business advisory services, which ACE provides free or charge to all clients. So these are opportunities to combine both the education piece and the access to capital to, threaten to really build a 
fo a foundation for our clients so that they can learn how to do business in this country. Now, I know you have some pretty unique experiences. You mentioned having your own restaurant, but you're not new to ACE. You spent the last three years doing some work, but I do know you started as a loan officer, right? That's right. I've been with ACE for six years, actually. So, yes, I started as a loan officer with ACE. Uh, a micro loan officer. I graduated to a director of the Women Business Center, which I run and, uh, and started uh, like a good entrepreneur. I like to start things. And so that's what I did with the Women Business Center, which was, uh, it still is, uh, run with a grant from the SBA, Small Business Administration. And now I'm doing this Hispanic initiative with loans over 100000 Now let's just go back to the Women's Initiative for a moment. That, that's headquartered downtown, as I recollect, in the... Uh well, no, the the Women Business Center, Ace Women Business Center, is headquartered in the city of Norcross. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, now talk about the different types of loans because you made. You, I know you're very proud of the fact that you started with micro loans, but you you grew up to bigger loans, and now you're really doing some interesting things. But talk about some of the needs and challenges for small business owners, and some of the bridges and gaps that uh, Ace provides. Well, I think the main challenge that we see at ACE is the lack of preparation. We have a lot of that happens uh, with the clients not understanding the loan process. So what we provide at ACE both on the front end and the back end is, is preparation through education. We want to help them. At the Women Business Center, we strive to help them preparing for the access to capital, for the request. We're preparing them for the ask. Uh, and in the back end, we're strengthening their business with the business advisory services through free, free consultations with experts like marketing and CPAs, lawyers, et cetera. So what we have at ACE is we have loan products that start at $5,000. So if you're a small micro business and you just need a small injection, you can access that through ACE, $5,000. Or you can go as high as $500,000. Some of the challenges we see as well is going to be in the collateral piece or the cash flow. A lot of our clients, especially when they're new, they're not really keeping records properly. <laughs> you know, exactly. You know what I mean. Well, <laughs> we, had that, we had that show not too long ago where the number one challenge for selling your business is Finding out what your business was before you decide to sell it. And, it, and it's the same with taking a loan. The day you need money is not the day you prepare for it. Absolutely. It's all tied in on how you keep the records, right? Because that, uh, we are only as good as what we see on paper. Yes, you can. T uh, I give you an example. I'm working with a, a, a small business owner. She is a stylist. She's working out of the basement of her home. She's making a $1,000 a week, but 500 of that is cash. She's not showing that cash anywhere. Can I count that towards the loan request? No, it's not cash flow <laughs> that I can see. So we, that's just a simple example of what we go through. So record keeping is crucial when you're access to we need access to capital. Well, the whole the whole the whole process of growing your business, which includes record keeping, but it's the marketing and the other parts, which we're going to talk about a little bit later today. So if you have a tip for folks who are looking, I know you have some events coming up. I notice that. Uh, Y'all, your company, your organization, ACE, has been very good at providing education, but they're also good at just connect, connecting the community around the city of Atlanta. We are so proud to have you here, focused in Atlanta is, is your function, but I think your home office is actually uh, uh, is up north, isn't it? Yes, that's correct. Our office, home office is in Cleveland, Georgia. Grace Freaks, the owner of the organization, she lives in Cleveland, Georgia, so our uh, all of our administrative staff is in Cleveland, Georgia. That's the support, the actual spine of the company. We can't do anything without them. And then we have a remote location in Norcross, which is the Ace Women Business Center, which is the where all of our events happen. And we also have a remote office at, at the Flatiron Building. Mm -hmm. Well, that was very interesting. You talk, you talk about the, the, the backbone, the spine, the business. Uh, I just noticed in the latest Business Chronicle where we're, the, the legislators are now challenged with making Georgia one again and uh, uniting the opportunities and challenges to, to the uh, rural areas back to what they are in the metropolitan areas. And you folks have sure been in the forefront of making that happen by making access to capital more real. So you've got an event coming up. We try to be an evergreen show, but I know you have some things coming up in July. Why don't you just drop those on the air, and then we'll ask you how to get in touch with you. Absolutely. So we have a couple of events coming up, but the uh, the one that I want to talk about is the Mega, um, Mega Accelerator. That's one day of all great information on how to start or grow your business. And that's July 29th. All this information can be found on our website at aceloans, L O A N S dot org. And I also can be reached at 404 717 2282. But uh, we have also what we call the speed coaching event, and that's when we put about 40 coaches, and this time it's going to be a multilingual, so you're going to have some in Spanish, some in Korean, and we're going to put those in combination with the Winnet Chamber of Commerce, 
in one room so that our clients can go 20 minute intervals to each coach and ask them the questions that they need to know about marketing, about access to capital, anything they need. Well, this is, sounds like job fair for companies or loan fair for companies, I guess, will make it more appropriate. Well, Grace, uh, not Grace, uh, uh, Maria, it's, so much, it's such a pleasure to have you. You've so, certainly worked for a great organization. Grace certainly had a great vision when she put this project together. And we thank you for being with us. And congratulations for at least the next three years as you start a new initiative and help Gwinnett County grow even more. So thank you so much for being with us at the Pro Business Channel at the uh, Buckhead Business Show today. And we're going to wrap, wrap this section up and talk about the Buckhead Business Association, which, as you probably know, we try to meet every week. We can't do it every morning, but we do have some after hours on the third week of each month, and we do it here in the Buckhead community. We pick a nice restaurant, a nice bar to go do a little social time and networking, just like you do to educate people. But those mornings are actually education as well because we have a great speaker program as well as a time for 60, 70, 80 people to learn something they would not learn unless they got in front of people, just as you do help them learn things that they can take out in the community and use in their business growth in everyday life. So we're very thankful for their sponsorship of our process here. So next we move on to the compassionate capitalist. Now, I have a unique opportunity to get Karen Rands here today because I believe she has a new book coming, which we're going to talk about a little bit. But let me just tell you a little bit about the compassionate capitalist. Karen Rands is a venture catalyst and the, and the compassionate capitalist, <laughs> where it's tough for me. Uh, she's an economist, an investor, an entrepreneur, and, but more actively, she's a leader and advocate for this movement. She believes in entrepreneurialism as being the greatest source of wealth and creation in our company today. Well, you just really don't have to be a successful entrepreneur, but you have to generate, six, generate generational wealth so that you can leave a mark in your marketplace. Uh, Karen has been very successful in, in helping people understand what the current deregulation of investor rules have been and the current way to practice those rules so that you do not get in trouble later, right? Yes, now, Karen has been all over the country doing what she does, but she's, she's actually looked as a dominant force in the entrepreneurial market, and we're very blessed to have her here in Atlanta. I know that she's recently received an award um, out in San Ramon, California, I guess recently being last year. She was recognized as being a promote, promoter of compassionate capitalism. Uh, Karen left the co corporate world over a decade, a, year, a decade ago and has been involved in many product launches. She's got some stories which we don't have time to tell all of this morning. <laughs> but she pursues her passion, and she's an innovation leader, and she is educating people to understand what is available. So certainly no greater person to have on board with us today than someone who really understands from the backside of what we've seen happen over the last 8 to 10 <coughs> years in the, in the capital market. And Karen speaks throughout the country as well as throughout the uh, Atlanta area to help people understand what's available and the best way to do it. And I do see a, under her box stack over there, she's got a book peeking out, which she's going to share some things about. So Karen Rance, and she's put it on screen there. So if you're watching us on Facebook Live, you've, you've got it right yeah. in front of you today. <laughs> so Karen, talk to us about what in the world is compassionate capitalism and why is it so important not only to you but to all of us as investors and or as business owners? Thank you, Michael. It's great to be back here again. I, I w as I was driving in here today, I got to thinking, y'all should start doing some kind of an award like they do on Saturday Night Live on how many times people are repeat guests on this show <laughs> <laughs> over the years. You'd so. be right up there with Steve Martin, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, we never charge for our awards, though. <laughs> <laughs> we don't give out any jackets with a crest on there either. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so, compassionate capitalism. So, here's the thing. You know, I... As I was rewriting this book, I wrote the book originally called How to Be an Angel Investor a decade ago to rebuild my um, angel investor group that I took over, the Network of Business Angels and Investors. And I realized that there are people that have money that would like to participate in investing in entrepreneurs but don't really know how to go about doing it. And so when in the regulations changed in 2012, it was like, here's a great opportunity to bring some new information out there. And as I s understood the impact of crowdfunding, and it kind of goes to what Maria was talking about, friends, families, and fools, right? That's Ooh. a, that's a, a <laughs> statement that people have used for ever since I started working with angel investors because it, it, in this sort of contempt that – there's people that will invest in a small business without really, you know, it's a foolish endeavor for them to invest in that small business. But I feel like the principles that successful angel investors bring to the table are can be taught to and be used by people that are investing in businesses no matter the size of it or the type of business. So the, the, the idea behind compassionate capitalism is that it's when people invest their money primarily, but also time, energy, resources, knowledge to help entrepreneur endeavors – uh, bring innovation to market, create jobs, and create wealth. And um, I, my goal in this movement, my intention is for you think about it. Twenty years ago, 
who invested in real estate. Only the most wealthy thought about investing in real estate. And then it became a cottage industry where people strove or strived, that's the right word? Ran, ran down the road. Ran down the road <laughs> trying to save up their money or when they came into a little cash for something, they would invest it in real estate as an asset class to create wealth. Well, I believe investing in entrepreneurs needs to be an asset class that everybody that has the means thinks about doing as a part of their portfolio. Mm -hmm. And that's the compassionate capitalist movement. And so if people, whether it's investing in the restaurant down the street that comp that complements something like Ace does and they, they marry their money up together, or it's investing in the next, you know, Uber, if you will, or, you know, Snapchat <laughs> or, you know, some other kind of software application or something like that, or or something that, you know, brings medical progress to the market, whatever it is that somebody's passionate about, they can make money at it and have compassion by putting that money to work where it actually has a direct impact. Well, it's definitely world. something that people, as we look at it, as you said, asset classes are, are diversifying your investments. The moreover, the, the most fun I see is when angel <laughs> investors get together and start talking about their experiences, be they good or sometimes bad. And there's a ratio and a process. I mean, you don't expect to make money on everything, but, you know, there's some very valuable experiences learned by investing in small companies. Absolutely. And, you know, the most... The, the greatest need of a small company is to have a good team supporting you. And it's not always that, that spouse or that daughter or that son-in-law or whomever or the grandmother or the mother-in-law or whoever. They just don't provide the money. They provide a wealth of knowledge. But many times capitalist uh, entrepreneurs don't look to their capital funding sources as their true resource for growing their business. So talk a little about some of the experiences you've seen. And I know there's a lot of them in those books yeah. and, and that book about those types of experiences. So. Talk about places and ways that we can we can look out and, and look at businesses different so that we can invest our money and build our generational wealth, not only for the entrepreneur, but for the investor. Yeah, so um, in when I was rewriting this book, they asked me to kind of tell a story, kind of put a story into it. So I have the story of Joe, the making of a compassionate capitalist, and it's modeled after a couple of the investors that I met when I was rebuilding the organization. And exactly what you said, Michael, the the um, energy that would be in the room when they would come in after they've invested in something, you know, we had this, a couple of really exciting technologies or exciting things that a bunch of them had come together and invested in. And the energy, because they knew that they were changing the world, you know, by having done that, right? And so there was, um, <clears throat> there was that great, there was that, that kind of a thing. And, um, and so it's just, it's, uh, and I, I went, I lost my train of thought. Joe. Joe. Well, I know Joe, but there was, it was leading into answering your question. But, well, it's leading uh, into know, the experiences the go experience, both ways. They, yeah. they go both ways, and they actually bring other people into the mix. So it is like that last pinch of salt that makes the right. recipe really taste the way yeah. that Grandma used to make it. Yeah, uh, and, and it's, it's, the, it's the innovation of the marketplace that um, – you know, it's you think about Warren Buffett. They always say, "Well, how does Warren Buffett? He invests in things that he knows," mm -hmm. and so that's the thing that angel investors a lot of times too. So, part of the thing, it, because with people that have means, it could be somebody who owns a plumbing business, yeah. and he may never go to a tech angel group and be a part of a tech angel group because doesn't understand tech, so to speak. But he understands in his industry what will make a change in the industry if there's a new lining for pipes or whatever it is, you know, and they can have the means and put that where that person, that particular company may not have an opportunity to go to a, a tech angel group and get funding. And they struggle when they're in these, all these other different types of industries that aren't part of the, the, the group. And part of the compassionate capitalist idea is that there's going to be people out there like my Joe, who he had left, he was, I met him at a network, a Buckhead Business Association networking event, as a matter of fact. Good plug. And uh, <laughs> I, ironically, yeah, I was. And we were, and he saw my card and he was like, well, what's angel investing? And he was the CEO of a U.S.-based operation that was foreign-owned and um, was debating. He was kind of bored with his job because he'd been running it for a long time. And he was sort of like debating on leaving it to go start a company. And so when he discovered angel investing, he said he realized, and this is the thing that I think, is that he didn't have the time, you know, to be a part of some of the other angel, traditional angel groups. But he, um, the whole thing was that he could take his money instead of taking, a, you know, sacrificing his time with his family and, you know, the money that his kids at that time were going to private school, right, and some of the vacations that they like to take. And instead of, of sacrificing that to work 80 hours as an entrepreneur startup, he could go and invest in these other startups. And he could help bring that innovation to the market. And he could be a part of that. And he could use his experience in his company with what he was doing 
um, in the, it was like a mm-hmm. agricultural thing to be able to bring it to 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 play with some of these and helping these companies that he had invested in, and it was he was so rewarding for him to be a part of that, but also maintain his standard of living of it, create the generational wealth that those companies get sold later well, and, on, and those kids would benefit. Right, exactly. <laughs> maybe he had to sacrifice one vacation. Yeah, one vacation. Now you've got this book re, re, being re released, and I know you've got a book launch coming up. So tell us a little bit about how we find you and look at your look at the pre release and get, maybe get to your book launch and get a signature. Okay. Inside Secrets to Angel Investing, Step-by-Step Strategies to Leverage Private Equity Investment for Passive Wealth Creation. It's available currently in print form on at Amazon, and a couple of other booksellers uh, online have picked it up. Um, and it's uh, it's available, the pre-launch is for the Kindle version, which is going to be out on um, August 2nd. It will be released, so you can, and, and Amazon's going to be doing some promotions for, well, they'll be bundling it up with the print version, and they're going to, you know, offer it free to Prime members and things like that. And so I'll be doing a push. You, If people want to sign up for when we do the free version of the Kindle, and then they'll do like a discounted version of the print book, they can go to um, if y'all are familiar with Bitly, B-I-T dot L-Y, um, get investor, get inside secrets free, is the um, is the link to go and sign up to be able to get that when that promo comes out. Otherwise, I want to encourage people to go ahead and go out there and get it now. And uh, <laughs> it's twenty bucks That's for right. the the Do print version, and it'll be nine ninety nine for the Kindle unless it's part of the Prime promo. And I'm going to be hitting shows and speaking engagements, and hopefully get on some panels and. You know, doing a lot of things to try to get the word out and and uh, really, you know, get people starting to think about how they use their money to benefit our economy. Well, Karen, we thank you for being on the Buckhead the uh, Buckhead Business Show one more time, and we look forward to, to kind of catching your date for your actual book look, book launch, where we can share some more ideas and thoughts. So, thank you for much for being with us. But the Buckhead Business Show is brought to you by the Buckhead Business Association, and we've got great guests this morning. And now we'll roll over and uh, look at the third guest for the morning, who is going to talk about being a, an expert in your own area, which is really important. So uh, Taylor, Taylor Higdon is uh, that, that expert, and she has come to us. She had to drive in, but you're going to tell us about Neil Pickle, I think, this morning. <laughs> so the Bucket Business Show, again, is, is, is really proud to have you this morning. I'm Michael Bourne. We're here with our co-host, Rich, Host, Rich uh, Casanova, behind the screen and <laughs> taking pictures of the books and, and running all the buttons this morning. So thanks for being with us, Taylor. Uh, you're going to share with us this idea about Dill Pickle, and uh, okay, I, I'm really well, excited to find out how we're going to be the expert in our own community so that we can uh, keep those records straight and put those stories out so that people know who we are before they need to know us, right? Absolutely. Well, Dill Pickle uh, is actually my marketing company. It's Dill Pickle Creative, and I started it with the idea or the knowledge that small businesses and entrepreneurs, one of their greatest fears is marketing because they don't know what the result is going to be. So um, with that in mind, I really thought about how we could maximize their marketing budget. And I came up with the idea to do a publication, which is called Park Living Magazine. And it is micro-targeted to the Buckhead area, specifically about 2,700 homes in 30305, 30342, and 30327. Now, <clears throat> when I say micro-targeting, what I mean is my magazine goes directly to these homes via U.S. mail. It is not dropped anywhere else. And what that does is it guarantees 100% penetration of the exact demographic that you are looking for. When you drop publications at Starbucks or somewhere, you don't know who's picking them up. You don't know who you're reaching. This way, when you put when you sponsor Park Living, you know exactly i can guarantee 100 percent that you are reaching your exact demographic now something a little different about my publication is that i let businesses actually submit content Um, and what that means is they sign on to sponsor the magazine and they are called what's an expert contributor then they submit content about their industry four times a year quarterly Once that's taken in each industry, nobody else in the same industry can submit content. So this is content branding. What it does is it teaches, it shows the community that you are the expert in your field, and it makes them the go-to person. Um, One of my passions is bringing businesses and communities together. I I do that in several different endeavors that I have. But this is where I am now, and it's, it's been going fantastic. 
Well, and you've, you've got some categories, and you've, you've re, you're a member of the Buckhead Business Association. We do want to point that out today. Oh, so yes. we, we, we're glad to have you in the room because our members sometimes don't know what's available just literally in the next chair when they have breakfast once, once a week with each other. So right, talk absolutely. about some of the experiences you've had with some of the Buckhead Business Association members and talk about some of your local experts. I won't try to jump in and help you out there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Buckhead Business Association has been an integral part. I'm relatively new to it. Um, but I have met wonderful people like Rich here at the breakfasts, and um, I've been able to attend uh, the big luncheon with Adam Zimmerman. Or, no, it wasn't Adam Zimmerman. It was uh, Georgia Film Academy. Uh, Je- Jeff uh, Steptoff. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And um, I've actually hooked up with him. He's going to be the focus of my August edition, and it just – the way he's interacted with the community to bring the community together, I want everybody to know about what he's doing for the Georgia film industry. And um, well, they, that you, great point there. That that was a connection you would not have. So you're going to actually build your August edition around something a, a, around that was him. a coincidental uh, absolutely encounter. absolutely being part of the Buckhead community certainly has value for your business then. it has done wonders for my business well let's look at some of these actual experiences you mentioned you have some experts and they're in certain categories and you're certainly focused on the Buckhead market so uh, if you had to get another expert in the area what experts do you still have openings for well I actually am interested in getting um, a medical expert a doctor or a lawyer or something of that nature now, law is and medicine is they have their own categories. Sure. It's not just if you're a doctor, you've taken that spot. Mm-hmm. We can have, say, a, a pediatrician. We can have a, a internist, dentist? a dentist, okay. anything like that. And I actually do have <laughs> a dentist um, as an expert contributor, uh, Dazzling Smiles, and she educates the community about um, implants and not using metal and the toxicity, right. toxicness. That's not the word. And I'm not toxicity. Uh, I'm yeah, not toxicity. Out. She's also a Buckhead Business Association member. Yes, so you, she is. You're keeping it Michaela, close to home. she's great. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. She's actually been on the show before, I believe. Uh, but always good to have good folks. Now, so how would someone contact you, and what would they do to become your expert? Other than just, you said write four times a year, right? Right, four could, times a year. Five hundred word article. Yes, okay. absolutely. <laughs> Most it's, people could pull that off. Yeah, right? absolutely. And I have a content coordinator that can help, um, and she comes up with great ideas. So it's not completely on their own. But you guys can contact me um, via my email at t higdon, which is h i g d o n at bestversionmedia.com. Or you can give me a call at 404-918-9512. And I'd love to chat with you about the opportunity to become the expert in your industry for this very micro-targeted, very affluent demographic. Well, now let me ask one other question because you said you directly mailed this to three zip codes about how many thousand homes again? 2,700 homes. 2,700 homes. So if you don't get it in your mailbox and you want to learn this content because it sounds like you're really curating some good information – is it available online as well? It is one? not available online, and let me explain why. Um, one Another different thing about my magazine is the residents themselves actually submit content. We have classifieds in there, so little Susie can say, I'll walk your dog this summer, whatever, and they put their phone number in. So it's a very intimate, exclusive magazine, and we don't want to share all that information with the rest of the world. Well, I certainly understand that. I wanted to make it available to the people if they, could, if they needed the content, but it sounds like you're really making this a community opportunity or, so do you have plans for expansion? Um, I do not. I'm going to keep this one micro-targeted. I may begin another publication once I feel like this one is kind of moving up and on its own. We just had our anniversary edition for July, so I'm very excited about that. And um, we'll just see where it goes. I'm having a blast working with this community. Well, it's an honor to see somebody from the Buckhead Business Association actually launching a new business in an expertise area, which they're very familiar with, and, and it's serving the community. But it sounds like this would be a, an item that almost every small community could use because we don't – what was that st- story I heard the other day about? I, I really want to meet people that keep me from looking at my, my, at my iPhone. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And it sounds like you're doing that at a very high level. Yeah. You're, absolutely. You're getting people to look out the window and know who the neighbor is. And as you said, if little Susie walks a dog – or a dentist down the street is talking about something that's going to affect the health of my family, I certainly would, would need to know about that. So, Absolutely. Taylor, we appreciate you being with us this morning. Again, we're sponsored by the Buckhead Business Association. We are the Pro Business Channel, and this is the Buckhead Business Show, and you've been listening to Mike and Rich here on this 
this this airwave today, and we've had three great guests. Rich, did you notice we were surrounded by women here? Uh, I, uh, yeah, 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 I did pick up on that. <laughs> and you did pick up on this <laughs> book, I, too. Did you slide that in your pocket? I did, yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, a couple of closing comments. I think the, uh, the continuity here is uh, basically Taylor's uh, printing magazines, um, Karen's printing a book, and Maria's printing money. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I like uh, on the front cover of Karen's book uh, a, a quote by Mark Cuban. I'm kind of uh, obsessed with the Shark Tank, and uh, it says, "Always wake up with a small smile, knowing that you um, today you're going to have fun accomplishing what others are too afraid to do." Mm-hmm. Right? And uh, she said it's like available for twenty bucks, and it's what three hundred. This isn't a lightweight book. This is three hundred and sixty-eight pages. I think you're getting your money's worth on that mm-hmm. one. Yeah. <laughs> and they get a resource portal that they get access to all the tools they need to be an angel investor. Dang, I just want to be an angel, but uh, I don't know about investing. Yeah. <laughs> well, we cer- <laughs> certainly would, would look look forward to seeing that book go to, go to the shelves and go to the Kindles and go to people's uses because we we do need one more thing in Atlanta here to become. Uh, the garden spot of the south is we need a few more angel investors to be putting money in local businesses because we have plenty of great ideas here yeah, can we get a loan before we head out of the uh, <laughs> no i don't think we're gonna get a loan before you from but Ace, maria yeah. will tell you to have, how to prepare for it and, and maybe karen can show you who could make you the the angel investment so you can pair to get enough money Sounds to make great. it work we'll see you next week on the buckhead business show thanks right. thank you thank you